business in the Okanagan matters. This is Law Talk with lawyers Clay Williams and Tanvir Gill from FH&P Lawyers, LLP. They talk business and take your questions at podcast at fhplawyers.com. Now, here's Clay Williams. Welcome to another edition of FH&P Lawyers Law Talk. I'm Clay Williams. I'm a partner at FH&P. And, hey, my usual cohort, Tanvir Gill, is not here today, but I have a great guest speaker, Colin Flanagan. Hi, Colin. How are you? Hey, Clay. Thanks for having me. I think you're overselling that a bit, though. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know what to say. We're doing real estate month. So uh, we in the uh, we're, we're doing blogs, we're doing uh, podcasts, we're doing a bunch of stuff related to real estate this month, and uh, we are continuing that today. Sounds good. Happy to weigh in. What's our topic? Uh, let's talk about contracts today, because let's be honest, when someone's buying a home, it's probably one of the biggest purchases of their life. So getting the contract right is uh, it's pretty important. Well, well, you know, Tanvir and I uh, did uh, one uh, last week uh, about just kind of the steps that you go through in, in in a person might expect in buying and selling a, a piece of real estate. And uh, so when you're talking about the contract, are you talking about the, uh, one of the things we talked about was that uh, you can do it privately or you can do it th- through a realtor. So, so what are you talking about? Well, in either way, actually. So if you do it through a realtor, you know, when you're going through those steps, that's when you make the offer. And if the offer gets accepted, that offer then becomes the contract itself. Now, if you're doing it privately, say using a lawyer to help you with forming that contract, the lawyer is going to help draft it for you. And then it'll be sent to the other side as an offer. And once it's accepted, then it becomes a binding contract. And one of the things that we did talk about last week was that um, uh, realtors and um, and I guess most lawyers, we don't, you don't have to do this way, most lawyers will use the same contract. Yeah, and a lot of this comes from a standard form contract put out through the BC Real Estate Association. Now, that's what the realtors are going to use. Now, when lawyers draft their contracts, there's going to be a lot of similar terms in there because there's a lot of key things from that contract that should still be incorporated. Now, if your lawyer drafts a contract for you, it's going to be a little more customized, though. It might address some things beyond than what you might get in just a standard form template. Well, certainly we'll cross out the part about giving the realtor a commission. Well, you would think so. I mean, unless you're also acting as the realtor, Clay. Well, that's a good point. <laughs> a good point. So what, what, what are some of the terms then that, uh, that uh, a, a purchaser or a seller, I guess, is going to see in, in a contract that they should be looking for? Well, a key thing is you've got to get your three Ps right. So you need to make sure you've got the right parties to the contract, right? If you're the buyer, you've got to make sure it's going to be in your name or whatever name you're going to use to own the property. You need to make sure you get the right seller, which is the owner of the current property. And then, of course, the second P is the property itself. Make sure you're buying the right property. And then third one, purchase price, third P. And that is make sure you're paying the right amount. So those three Ps need to make sure that they are correct. Yeah, you know, that's funny that you, 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 it seems like it would be really easy to make sure you're buying the right property, but, but I've seen some times when the right property wasn't actually purchased, often in a strata situation. Yeah, and that's why it's so important to make sure that when you're doing this, you're doing it right with professional help. You're getting the searches done in the land title office, making sure it's the right property itself, you know, and those, that, that's going to be the start of the contract. Now, there's going to be some other important clauses to have in there as well, too. And the next one is probably talking about conditions, right? Now, conditions are going to be the, quote, subjects that if you're the buyer saying, look, I want to buy this property, but it's subject to me getting approved for financing or subject to me getting home insurance, right? I mean, as we saw this past summer with the fires, you know, getting home insurance is a very important part. Even if you're not getting a mortgage, you definitely want to make sure you're going to be able to get insurance on your property. So when you're putting together your contract, you want to make sure you think about what are the things that you need to have in place to make sure before you're willing to go ahead and complete this purchase? And I guess uh, that, that it does involve some conversations with the, your realtor or your lawyer. I mean, I, you know, just off the top of my head, I think about rural properties and wells, for instance. I mean, you know, why would I buy a property if I don't have access to fresh water, that type of thing? So. Potable water, you absolutely hit the nail on the head there. And the same thing goes with if you've got wood-burning fireplaces or wood-burning stoves. You've got to make sure they've got a wet certificate on things like that as well, too. So some of those conditions are going to be particular and specialized to the, or to the type of property you're buying. 
and even say if you're buying a strata property, right? You might want to have a condition in there to not only review all the strata documents, but see if there's been any special levies that have been approved as well too. Because who's going to be responsible for that if the payment happens after you're going to take possession of the property? Is it you, the buyer, or is it going to be the seller? So these are going to be some of the things that, depending on the nature of the property, you need to make sure your conditions are the right ones. You know, it just reminds me of a story. I did a deal up in Beaverdale, and one of the conditions was radiation testing of the water. And I don't know if our listeners realize it, but there used to be a uranium mine in Beaverdale, and a lot of the water is radioactive. Yeah. So uh, that would be something, uh, just a very unusual condition. It's unusual, but you know, going back to what you were talking about, especially if one of those properties is on a well, you need to make sure that it's going to be serviceable water that you can use. Right. So, you know, going on from there, you know, of course, the conditions are going to be very important. But then you also need to think about when is going to be your completion date, when is going to be your adjustment date, when's going to be your possession date. So those are the three important dates in the actual purchase of the property. Completion date is going to be the date in which you actually do the registration, the change of the title ownership in the land title office. The adjustment date. So whenever you complete a purchase of a property is likely going to be something called adjustments. And that's going to be expenses that have occurred that need to be put on a pro rata basis to make it fair. Give you an example, property taxes, right? You get your invoice in the middle of the year, you pay it in the middle of the year, but it's actually for the entirety of the calendar year, right? So depending on when your sale is or your purchase is, you're gonna want to adjust the property taxes so it's fair. Who had the property for what percentage of the year? Who pays what percentage of the property taxes? So your adjustment date is usually gonna be your possession date. Now, here's a big one for people is, what date do you have as your possession date? Is it going to be the same date as your completion date? Or is it going to maybe be the day after? And it's going to depend on your circumstances. So you need to make sure you pay close attention to this. Because if you are, say, selling a property one day and buying a property on that same date, you know, you're setting your two completion dates the same, but when are you taking possession of the new property? And if the property you're selling, you've got to be out on one day you're not supposed to take possession of the next property until the next day, where are you going to sleep that night? Good point. And how many times, too, when you have a completion date, uh, you're not going to get possession until the money's moved. And, uh, you know, we've had several instances where people are waiting outside with moving trucks. So really important uh, to discuss that and uh, and to... uh, uh, to make sure you planned accordingly. Uh, do you know just a, uh, one of the things that a pet peeve of mine when you mentioned the completion date is when uh, clients will move the completion date without telling us. And, you know, I, I hope our, our, maybe we can use this as a forum to, to emphasize a lot has to be done in the background for the completion date to be met and to move it boy, that can cause some problems. We need to know about that and get our permission before it's moved. So here's a request to the listeners out there. If you were thinking of changing your completion date, please let your lawyer know in advance. (laughs) Please do, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So any other uh, topics that you can think about uh, or any um, other conditions? Well, tying two pieces together, we talked about one was insurance and one was talking about the dates. And you know, this is gonna be an important part to realize. So looking at the standard, you know, real estate contract we're talking about, and even if you use a lawyer to draft one, you're gonna have a similar clause on what it's called as a risk clause and saying, when does insurable risk pass from the seller to the buyer? That's usually at 12.01 a.m. Now here's a little bit of advice for people though, and that is making sure that you've got extra insurance is better than having not enough insurance. Now, while the insurable risk might pass at 12.01 a.m. on that completion date, if a pipe bursts on the completion date, it's better to have the insurance companies fighting over who has to cover it rather than you as a party having to fight with an insurance company for the other party and saying, who pays for the repairs from this water damage? If you are the buyer, it's usually a good idea to have your insurance in the day before the completion date, have it in place. Same thing goes if you're the seller, have it the day after the completion date i know it seems like you're paying an extra day of insurance but you know what if you have that bad luck and have that pipe burst on the completion date you're going to be happy that you had the extra day of insurance on there you know it it it, what a good point and uh i don't know there's been many times where a pipe has burst i mean it just seems like really bad luck but you and i have seen that uh, 
probably a dozen times. Yeah. So a very good point. Well, and here's another one as well too. If you're buying a property, don't wait to the last minute to get your insurance in place as well too. I'm not saying to make sure the policy has already started, but at least get approved for your insurance because especially where we live during the summers, mm. if there's a forest fire that breaks out, you're gonna find it very difficult to get insurance. If there's a fire that is out of control within a set radius of the property, you might have trouble getting it. So if you're going to make an offer on a property, you know what? In, get in, your in August. Uh, <laughs> July or August. The, in the Okanagan. That's yeah, right. Get your insurance in place. Get it. Don't wait around. Don't leave that as a last minute thing to do right before the closing date. Get that locked in. All right. Any other comments uh, that you wanted to make? My only other comment is make sure you get a good lawyer like Clay Williams. Oh, I like that. There you go. A little plug for you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. All right, so just continuing with uh, Real Estate Month at FH&P Lawyers, and uh, stay tuned. Uh, we're doing blogs. We're doing the podcast. We're trying to get a lot of information out, so uh, stay tuned. FHMP lawyers are rooted in community and ready to help. Send your business law questions to podcast at fhplawyers.com. 